Hey friends, welcome. Today uh, we will be discussing one of the topics of uh, irreversible thermodynamics and that is transformation properties of uh, fluxes and forces. So as we all know that any irreversible process it is uh, made up of fluxes it is made up of fluxes and forces and we also have seen earlier that for any particular chemical reaction the rate of entropy production that is sigma or uh, this it is also given as dsi upon dt where uh, dsi is the entropy change inside the system or uh, within the system and dt is uh, the time so rate of change of entropy per unit time it is represented as entropy production and this is given by j into j into x where uh, j are defined as uh, the fluxes j is identified as the fluxes and x is the driving force so earlier uh, when uh, we when we are discussing entropy production during chemical reaction uh, we have seen that this entropy production that is uh, we have seen this expression that is t sigma is equal to a into mu where a is the chemical affinity and mu is the rate of the reaction so over here this mu it could be identified as the flux and the chemical affinity of any particular reaction is the driving force uh, which is driving it okay so uh, basically we will be using this particular relationship to show the transformation properties of fluxes and forces similarly this is the reaction when we have only single a single reaction taking place for more than one reaction taking place the entropy production sigma uh, or i could write it as t sigma this could be given as summation of uh, we can say ai mu i this could be represented in this particular manner so over here for the proof or for showing the transformation properties uh, we will be considering two different cases and ultimately we will be showing that for both the cases the fluxes and forces are same so the first case uh, that we'll be uh, looking at will be a consecutive reaction and the second case we will be looking at the reaction wherein two independent reaction will take place okay so the uh, first case uh, suppose we are considering our uh, reaction is a consecutive reaction and for consecutive reaction we are considering that suppose a is converted into b and then b is converted into c so this is the consecutive reaction and over here uh, for this uh, suppose if we are considering that a1 is the affinity for the conversion of a to b and a2 is the affinity for the conversion from b to c now over here uh, suppose if i say that a1 is the affinity so affinity uh, we all know that affinity a it is given as minus summation again uh, mu i mu where mu i is the chemical potential and this mu is the stoichiometric coefficient and this stoichiometric coefficient uh, suppose we are considering as one over here uh, so uh, over here and this will be product minus reactant so the chemical affinity a1 for the first reaction i could write it as minus of mu b minus mu a and that will be equal to mu a minus mu b similarly for the affinity for the second reaction that is a2 i could write it as minus of mu c minus of mu b and that we will be writing it again as mu b minus mu a okay uh, so these are the affinities for uh, the first and second reaction respectively similarly now the rate that is uh, the rate either the rate i could write it as a rate um, the ra rate i could write it as a change in the number of moles uh, so uh, suppose if i want to write the rate then rate of consumption or rate of change of a or rate of change of number of moles of a that is uh, dna by dt this i would write it as mu1 so suppose mu1 is the rate and similarly for uh, the formation of products c for the formation of product c 
the rate I could write it as dnc by dt and this will be equal to mu2 and similarly the rate of formation of B that is dn B by dt so rate of formation of P will be over here as it is a consecutive reaction so in first step B will be formed while in second step P will be consumed so uh, rate of consumption of A will be equal to the rate of formation of B while the rate of formation of C will be equal to the rate of consumption of B so this I could write it as dNA by dt so over here this will give us the formation of b minus we will have dn c by dt so this will give us the consumption of so this gives us the formation of b and this gives us the consumption of p and this we could write it as so mu and minus mu2 will give us uh, the rate of formation of b now over here the entropy production uh, as i have told so entropy production we could write it as t sigma or we could also write it as t dsi by dt both are one and the same and this will is equal to uh, so as we have seen earlier it is the summation of the entropy production and the rate so over here uh, as we can see that a1 is the entropy production for first reaction similarly mu1 will be the rate and a2 is the entropy uh, sorry a2 a2 is the chemical affinity for our second reaction while mu2 is its rate so uh, the entropy production over here we could write it as a1 mu1 plus a2 mu2 so this will give us uh, the entropy production when the reaction is taking place consecutively moving on to our second case wherein uh, we are considering two independent reactions say suppose if we are considering that a uh, reaction a is converting into c and similarly reaction b it is also converting into c okay so both these reactions they are independent reactions and they are not influencing each other now over here suppose we are considering that a1 dash is the affinity of this reaction and a2 dash is the affinity of this reaction so over here the affinity that is a1 dash will be equal to uh, we could we could write it as mu a minus mu c okay and mu a minus mu c uh, when we relate to this expression then mu a minus mu c will be over here you can see that if we add both this if we add both this that is if we do a1 plus a2 then if we add this then we will have this is minus and this is plus so both of this will be cancelled out and we will have mu a minus oh sorry this is this is c okay this is c so this we will have mu a minus mu c so over here this we could write it as a1 plus a2 and similarly a2 dash we could write it as mu b minus mu c and mu b minus mu c mu b minus mu c it is nothing but it is a2 so this could be represented as a2 okay moving on to the rate now rate of first uh, rate of consumption of a so we will have dna upon dt that is minus dna upon dt will be mu1 dash suppose we are again writing rate as mu1 dash similarly so in first step a is a is consumed and c is formed in the second step what is happening is b is consumed and c is formed so this i could write it as minus dnb by dt and that is equal to i will write mu2 dash and similarly similarly the in both these reactions uh, c is formed so dnc by dt will be equal to dnc by dt will be equal to uh, in the first step 
C is formed and similarly in the second step also C is formed. So the formation of C will be the sum of both these. Okay, that is mu1 dash plus mu2 dash. So this will give us this will give us the formation of C. So now when we compare this rates with the earlier rates, uh, what we could write is we have DNA upon DT is equal to V1. So we could write V1 is equal to v1 dash also dnc by dt is the rate of formation it is v2 so this we could compare and we could write v2 is equal to v1 dash plus v2 dash okay so these are the relationships and the entropy production for this particular set of reactions entropy production could be represented or could be written as we will have a1 dash mu1 dash plus a2 dash mu2 dash okay this will and this could be written in this particular manner now we have the value of a1 dash a2 dash in the form of a1 and a2 respectively so we could substitute these values that is uh, suppose this is equation number one this is two and uh, this is our equation number three and this is our equation number four so all these four values could be substituted in this particular expression and then we will simplify it okay so we had the relationship t sigma is equal to a1 mu1 dash plus a2 mu2 dash and the relationships we had is a1 dash is equal to a1 plus a2 we have a2 dash is equal to a2 mu1 is equal to mu1 dash and mu2 is equal to mu1 dash plus mu2 dash so these were the four relationships that we had uh, so over here this we could rearrange in the form of mu2 dash that is mu2 dash is equal to mu2 minus mu1 dash and mu1 dash we know it is equal to mu1 so this we could write it as mu1 minus mu2 so this and the remaining relationships we will be substituting over here so a1 dash we have it is a1 plus a2 into mu1 mu1 dash i could write it as mu1 plus again a2 dash is equal to a2 so this will be a2 into mu2 minus mu1 this is okay so when we multiply it we will have a1 mu1 plus a2 mu1 plus a2 mu2 minus a2 mu1 so this a2 mu1 and this a2 mu1 will be cancelled out and we will be left with a1 mu1 plus a2 mu2 so this is the same as we have obtained for the first case that is for the first case also we have obtained a1 mu1 plus a2 mu2 and uh, for the second case also when we are simplifying we are getting the same case so irrespective of the irrespective of uh, the path through which the reaction is taking place the entropy production is same so hence uh, we could generalize the fluxes and forces uh, in the form uh, that is uh, the older fluxes and forces could be written as the linear combination of uh, the new newer fluxes and forces so suppose if we say that j k and x k are the fluxes and forces for the older set of reaction and if we say that uh, j dash k and x dash k are the forces and uh, fluxes and the forces for the newer set of reaction then this could be generalized as summation j k x k is equal to summation j dash k uh, x dash k so that we have seen so this is our j dash k j dash k x dash k and this is our j k j k x k and hence uh, hence we can say that irrespective of the path through which the reaction is taking place if we are obtaining the same product 
at the end of both the reactions then in such cases the fluxes and forces for all the reactions will be same irrespective of path that is suppose if we are following a consecutive reaction or if we are following say uh, simultaneous two independent reaction that is a is converted into c and b is converted into c so in both the cases the fluxes and forces will remain same so this is the transformation of fluxes and forces hope the topic is clear thank you very much